Hey everybody, we have an Australian Labradoodle puppy video update. Today we have the four week old Labradoodle puppies from our licorice twist litter. And there's Mama Labradoodle Misha poking her head out from her bed full of puppies. Hi, I'm Claire from Van Nuyle Labradoodles and these puppies are all beautiful ebony puppies except for our one gorgeous chocolate puppy and a lot of these puppies are sable labradoodle puppies so today we're going to be telling you in the video a little bit about what the puppies are up to the milestones they've reached now that they're four weeks old and we're going to talk a little bit about moving the puppies over onto solid food and how we do the weaning process and we're also going to tell you a little bit about canine nutrition so here we have all of the seven puppies who are all thriving. You can see these puppies all have beautiful plump tummies. Mama Misha has decided she prefers to lie right on the floor to feed them. She didn't like the bed arrangement. It was a little too crowded for her. So we'll just redirect everybody over there and help them find their way to the milk bar. So these puppies, this is not where they usually are. We're in our puppy family room to shoot the video. Normally they are upstairs in our doodle den. So one thing you'll notice is the puppies have a little bit of a hard time getting traction on this floor. And so we do not have this type of flooring where the puppies normally are uh, because we want them to be able to move around easily and also so we don't put any stress on their joints. So that's an important thing to keep in mind when you take your Labradoodle puppy home that you want to make sure that the flooring that they're on has some traction for them so they can get some purchase on it. You don't want them to be scrabbling around with their legs coming out from under them and you'll also see that we have two pee pads here separate from the bed so already these puppies are learning not to be going pee in their bed or their sleeping area but to go pee on the pee pad and green collar just before we started filming did take himself right out of the bed over to the pee pad and that was where he went to the bathroom so yay for green collar and we can see blue collar here is on the wrong side of the milk bar hmm trying to figure out how to negotiate the, his way in there so i'll give him a little assist put him in there and let him see what he can do so the puppies you can see are getting so much bigger now so they're taking up a lot of space at the milk bar uh, there probably is not quite room for everybody all at once anymore and Misha is also interested in starting to wean the puppies. So this is the natural time. And why does that happen at four weeks? Well, it's because the puppies start to get teeth. The puppies also have grown to a size where it's a lot of work for mom to be able to feed them all. So it's just a natural progression in the development of the puppies. So what do we do about that? Well, first of all, we wait until our mama Labradoodles and our Labradoodle puppies tell us, hey, we're ready to start eating solid food. And how do we know that? Well, mom, as you can see Misha is doing right now, does not stay letting the puppies nurse for a long period of time. You can also see if you look at Misha's milk bar here, it's nowhere near full. There's not a lot of milk going on in here. So she's producing less milk because she is feeding them less and with less stimulation on the nipples then less milk is produced. She's still eating a ton. Uh, she's still eating about four times what she would normally eat. And she does definitely have more than enough milk for everybody, as you'll find out when we go through their weights. But this is just the natural progression. We also put our hands in the puppy's mouth so that we know if their teeth are coming in and if the puppies start to get a little fussy. So after they nurse, if they're still looking around for food, looking like they want something more, then we know, yeah, it's time to start it introducing that food to them. So what do we feed them? Well, when they're this age at four weeks and they have some teeth, their digestive systems and their mouths are ready for a good raw food diet. And so when we feed the puppies raw, we are feeding them what they would eat under normal, natural circumstances. Raw food is a whole food diet and a natural food diet for a dog. They do not naturally eat highly processed cereal, which is what kibble is with a little bit of meat thrown in. So what they will be eating is we use one product, which is Steve's freeze-dried raw. 
and it comes in little uh, nuggets and you can have them either frozen or freeze dried. But what we like for the puppies is to use the freeze dried, it's just as good as the frozen raw. Then we rehydrate it in goat milk. So we crumble them up and we let them sit in the goat milk. Goat milk is as close to mama milk as you can get. And Misha's just asking Reynolds now to take her out so we'll probably be saying goodbye to her. She says, that's it, I've had enough of my puppies, let me out of here. <laughs> so off she goes. She'll stay nearby but she just doesn't want to be right in with them. I'm gonna put them back in their bed here so they have a little bit better traction. I'll give them some toys and then if they want to get out again, of course, they can do so. So we take that Steve's uh, dehydrated raw, we soak it in the goat milk and it becomes almost like a mushy gruel. And then we also stir in some frozen raw, which will be primarily chicken and turkey at this age. And the only reason why we use those two proteins to start with is because they have a softer, mushier consistency than beef, lamb, or duck does. So we stir a bit of that in, and then over the next week, we will start uh, rehydrating it a little shorter periods of time and introducing more of the frozen raw and then giving them the re rehydrated, freeze-dried, just normally rehydrated, not where it's all crumbled up. So that all takes, you know, a few weeks for us to, to get through the whole process. And those foods, those options are, uh, this, it's the Stella and Chewy's frozen raw that we use primarily. We also use the Steve's raw because it comes in these nice little nuggets and we can serve them to the puppies in oh, about 10 days from now when they're still somewhat icy. They're small so they can get them in their mouths and it's like, oh, that feels so good on my gums where I'm teething. So they really enjoy that. And then the other is the Stella and Chewy Frozen Raw. It comes in a patty and we cut that up for them or, or uh, fork it up for them so it's in smaller bits. And the, the raw is just super uh, nutritious for them. And these two brands are 100% balanced and complete. There are no needs for any supplements whatsoever. Now we will also give them, when they are about six weeks old, we'll introduce them to chicken necks. And those will be raw chicken necks, they'll still be somewhat frozen, We'll teach them how to eat them so they don't try to swallow the whole thing in, in one bit. Uh, but we'll teach them how to chew them. Again, fantastic for teething. A little added bonus with some extra nutrition, some great nutrients, micronutrients, and of course that all important calcium that puppies need. So it's really not complicated, it's not messy, it's not hard to do, and as long as you use a product that is already properly balanced and complete, then you're on your way. Now don't be fooled though, because almost every single package that is dog food, no matter whether it's uh, highly processed kibble, freeze dried, dehydrated or frozen, it will say complete and balanced. Unless on the bag it says complete and balanced to AFCO standards, it's not. So unless you see that on the bag, and the only brands uh, that we know of that are complete and balanced are Stella and Chewy's, Steve's, and Primal. But we do not find any of our dogs like Primal. They, all of our dogs reject it uh, no matter what um, f protein we use, no matter if we rehydrate it, we don't, or how we serve it, nobody likes it. So we do not use the Primal ever. But it is a complete food, and if your Labradoodle puppy likes it, then hey, that's great. So what else are these guys up to? Well, you can see they're playing. You can see they're very mobile, even on this somewhat slippery surface. You can see that they're nice, chunky, square-shaped bodies, beautiful puppies, really uh, just doing great. Uh, oh, we had a little bit of a pee on the floor here. Do you mind just bringing me the uh, uh, mop, Reynolds? Uh, somebody did not go to the designated area. Oh, no. And you can hear the bucket. So that's the bucket we use. We have that everywhere. And so the puppies hear that all the time. And that's a great sound desensitization for them because it makes quite a lot of noise. And it's a really good thing for them to become used to and get familiar with. So they're also watching TV. Well, they're not watching TV, they're listening to TV. They are hearing that a lot. Uh, they have lots of sounds from us, the vacuum cleaner, washing machine, dryer, and all the other dogs are in there as well. 
while we go in and out all the time, plus other puppies. So they're having lots of their first desensitization experiences and they're beginning their socialization. And you can see here on this puppy, come here, sweetheart. You stay here, little girl. Do you want to get down? Little pink, that's our tiny one. So this is mint collar girl. A nice chunky puppy. You can see her fur is lifting. So this is something else that starts to happen at this point. And what the heck does this mean? Well, it looks like she got electrocuted in one spot there. <laughs> what this is, is when the coat becomes that really desired, beautiful, fluffy teddy bear Australian Labradoodle coat. Because up until now, their coats are pretty flat on their bodies. They look like labs. Uh, they don't look anything like a Labradoodle. So this is just the process when the coat is maturing and it starts to come up and lift off the body and we get that beautiful fullness. And it's really fun because sometimes it comes in little tufts like that. And sometimes it looks pretty funny. Sometimes we get some mohawks going on and sometimes we get some just just around the ears and some crazy sitting up in the middle of the head sections. It's really fun. Now these puppies have all started their solid food. They have had their first meals and it is exactly what I told you, the rehydrated freeze dried uh, plus a little bit of, uh, I think it was the chicken today. Oh my goodness, are you having a fight with your brother and growling at me? Oh my goodness me, there we go. So you can hear the growls. There's lots of growling that goes on now and barking as they all communicate with each other. This is a really important time for the puppies as they learn where they are in the group. Everything they do is for them to figure out where do I fit in the group? Am I the top dog? Am I the bottom dog? Am I Miss Congeniality? Am I the enforcer? Who am I on this little team of Labradoodles that we have here? So this is something that we take very uh, a lot of notes during this period of time because how the puppies start to develop now is very indicative of how they are probably going to be at the end of the day. Now don't mistake that for if I tell you, oh, this puppy's really shy and this puppy's really outgoing. At this point in time, that will change, but who becomes sort of the leader in the group generally tends to remain the same starting at this point in time. And it doesn't matter if it's the tiniest puppy, which this little girl is, or if it's the biggest puppy. And the biggest puppy in this litter is Red Collar. Red has always been the biggest as far as I know. I don't think we've ever had a week when this big guy here hasn't been our biggest puppy. He is a bruiser, aren't you? Oh, yes you are. He's a very big fellow. Very handsome too. And you see how they're starting to see a little bit better now. You could see him there when he was trying to find my nose to give me a kiss but he's still a little bit like this trying to get me in focus so now you can see how Misha is lying beside them this is what Misha does most of the time now so upstairs we have things organized so that she's able to do this so she can stay nice and close to the puppies she's able to access them and get to them should she feel that they need her and come in to feed them whenever she wants but she's able to keep herself separate from them so that they're not constantly nursing so that's how moms instinctively get their puppies to start to wean themselves so it's a a different period it's the first uh, period of any sort of separation for the puppies as they begin to come a bit more separated from mom and a little bit more independent and this is where I want to point out that no puppy comes with separation anxiety I don't care if it's a puppy from the SPCA or it's a, a puppy from the most and best socialized uh, breeder that you can find in the universe. There is no puppy who is born with separation anxiety. Separation anxiety is a learned behavior. Dogs learn that from not being well socialized when they're this age by their breeder and then not having that socialization continue successfully by their new family. Lots of times you can have a puppy who's just perfect, goes home to the family, they don't follow through with all the socialization and they end up with a puppy with separation anxiety. So we do a lot of education with our families, teaching them what to do and how to do separation successfully so that you have puppies who are happy, well adjusted. Because what do we want our puppies to do? We want them to complement our lives not complicate our lives. Separation anxiety is a complication. 
And it doesn't matter if you have an anxious personality. If you have that and you share that with us, then we're going to make sure that we match you with a puppy who's well able to handle that and doesn't internalize that anxiety and then display it themselves. So that's all part of our matching process. But just something to really keep in mind that these dogs do not have any separation anxiety. If they cry when Misha's over there, it's because they want her to come back and they want the comfort of that milk bar. But they're not all stressed and they're not scared and they're not shaking. That just doesn't happen with dogs. The only way they learn that behavior is from humans. So now let's talk about each of the puppies and go through that and give you an update on them. And we'll do that in birth order like we always do assuming that they're all going to come over here when I need them. So the first pu puppy is dark blue collar who's over at the far end, but Reynolds will just hand him over to me. He's over there having a little uh, conversation with red collar. Hello, Mr. Dog Blue. So this puppy is one of these absolutely stunning ebony puppies with the beautiful white goatee, white on the chest. Still got that gleaming coat even though he's covered in a little bit of his food because they don't eat too tidily to start off with. I do beautiful. This puppy has some pretty little highlights around his nose, which may mean that he is a black sable. Otherwise, I can't tell you if he's a sable or not. And Mr. Dark Blue is 1.06 kilograms. So he's one of the tinier puppies in the litter. And then next we go to Mr. Red Collar, who is our giant. Hello, Mr. Red. Mr. Red Collar, here we go. And oh, yes, I just got to make sure you are a boy. Yes, you are. <laughs> this puppy, this is a really handsome guy. This puppy is a very forward and confident puppy. A very sweet puppy with lots of good eye contact. You'll see how he's looking at me all the time, checking things out. And right now, even though he's not looking directly at me, he is still very much aware that I'm speaking. Hi, this is a handsome boy. Beautiful black with all of this white to show off all that pretty ebony that just gleams. Oh my goodness. And so many kisses from my handsome boy. Very affectionate puppy. Yes. Oh, the nose kisses. Thank you. You. Oh, I just love all my kisses. And as I said, he's the biggest and he is 1.73 kilograms. Yes, yeah, so almost two kilograms. Yes, he's a good sized puppy, aren't you? Now, you see when I go like this towards his face, how he backs up? Now, something to keep in mind. Lots of people, when they meet a dog, they do this with their hand and they come to pet them like that. Dogs hate that. It's very scary. It's, you can imagine if you're down here and someone's got their hand in their face, well, we do it like that, where we think they want to sniff us. They do not. They already know what you smell like. Or your hand comes over their head. They're like, oh my goodness, what are you going to do to me? So what you want to do when you approach a puppy is go on the side. First of all, you want to get down to their eye level. You want to wait till they make a forward movement to you. And then you want to put your hand on the side of their face and under their chin. And then you see how immediately he responds with kisses. Now once you know your puppy and they know you, then you can come in for the close-ups and let them kiss you if they want to. But let them initiate that, right? That's a good boy. Next on the list is Green Collar. Green Collar, come here, baby. Come here. Puppy, 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 come on. Come on, baby. Can you come? Come on, puppy, puppy, puppy. Oh, Misha's trying to knock everything over. Come here, Green. I think this is green. Aren't you? Boop. Are you green color? I think you're green color. Nope, that's blue. Reynolds, can you get me green color, please? Oh, green color is up here in the bed sleeping. There we go. There you go. Misha, go with daddy. There we go. There's Mr. Green Collar. Mr. Green Collar. Oh my goodness, such a handsome boy. This is our jet black fellow. All black, all shiny, all gleamy. And Mr. Green is 1.27 kilograms. And he says, hey, let me go, let me go. Mummy's coming in. Let me go, let me go, let me go see mummy. Oh my goodness, there's going to be a stampede to go see mummy. I'm going to quickly go through. Next is light blue collar. Brenda, maybe you could get light blue collar for me over there. Just, we'll just uh, wait for a second. Just, 
We have too much space. Oh no, we have a runaway puppy. There we go. I gotcha. Hi, hello, Mr. Light Blue. How are you? Mr. Light Blue is also a really, really handsome, gleaming ebony boy with his white highlights. And you'll see he's got cacas on his feet here. And that's because he was running through his food dish this morning. And Mr. Light Blue is 1.35 kilograms. And there you go. That's your prize. You can go to mom. And next after light blue, we have all of our girls. And pink is our first girl. Where is Miss Pink over there? Thank you. Nope, that's not pink. Pink is the sable one. The really obvious sable one. Yeah, there she is, hot little pretty girl. This is our little girl who fools everybody because she does not look like she's a black dog, but she is a genetically black dog. And she's also our tiny girl in the litter our little petite bit of adorableness. Now every week she looks different as her sable um, color clears out. And look at all of that beautiful facial marking. This is just an, a gorgeous puppy, so pretty, so unique. And this is why I love sable because they are just so different and every puppy has their own individual selves and Miss Pink is our little tiny girl, the only one who hasn't quite got to a kilogram yet. She's 912 grams. There you go, my little cutie pie. Put you just down there. And then next we have Mint. Mint, Mint, Mint. There's Mint. Mint's going to be mad at me because she's going to lose her spot at the milk bar. Sorry, Mint. Mint is the one I showed you before whose coat is starting to lift. Here, Pinky, if you want something to eat, you can take Mint's spot. Hi. And Mint is also a sable. Now, how do we know she's a sable when I didn't know for sure about the other one? Well, because she has a pretty good giveaway right here on the side of her face. You can see she has what looks like it could be a phantom marking. And then if we look on her legs, come here, show me your legs right here. You'll see again, it looks like something that looks like phantom. Same on these back ones. See these little patches of different color that's because she's a black sable. So she is exactly the same genetically speaking in terms of color and pattern as this dog. Exactly the same and look how different they are. And that's what I mean when I say I can't get enough of the sable labradoodles because you just never know. And Miss Mint Color is 1.33 kilograms. And last but not least we have Yellow Color Girl. And Yellow Collar Girl is our only not black girl, dog, period, not just girl. And she's chocolate. Yes, she's a beautiful chocolate girl. And uh, again, I don't know if she's sable or not. She doesn't have anything obviously sable about her to make me go, oh yeah, bitcher she is. She's a gorgeous deep chocolate, really pretty girl. Look at that cute little face. Very, very nice little face. If she isn't uh, sable, then she carries for sable. And she's 1.13 kilograms. So that's all the puppies. I hope you enjoyed the video. You can see again what I was talking about. Misha was in there for about two minutes and then she's like, yeah, okay, I don't want to feed you anymore. And she removed herself. Uh, if you have any questions about Sable or anything to do with Labradoodles, please feel free to post your questions in the comments. And we hope you enjoyed the video and you'll join us again next week and just see how much these little beauties have grown. Thanks so much for watching. Hey kids, hi.